Mm, half in nation. All right, so here's the dealio. The back, I rested it up for a week. I stopped working on the car. I laid in bed for a solid week. And um, the steroids immediately took away the pain. And as the steroids were fully in my system, the pain was almost complete gone. So day that I was on the final, or they, they start strong and then they taper off to not steroid. And I'm guessing because you don't want to cold turkey them or something. That's why they do it like that. But um, yeah, we, on the last day when the steroid tapering off, I started to feel some pain and I was like, oh, come on. So I, I, I really just relaxed and tried not to worry about it. I was at work the next day. So this is now one day after having no steroids at all. And I felt a little bit of pain, but unfortunately at work, I had to run around like a chicken with my head cut off because my coworker didn't come in that day. Basically, I was running around and, and like I was putting a lot more uh, stress on my back than I wanted to, but I had to. You gotta do your job you now find a new one. It's just how it worked. And uh, I was doing what I had to do. And I was like, man, I'm really putting on, I'm thinking in my head, man, this is doing a lot of bending, a lot of, a lot of moving around and whatnot. And it, I knew that I overworked myself. Like I was, man, this, that's how I work when I work. I'll, I'll get gear and go. Anyways. Um, so that night, uh, when I got home, I was like, damn, I need, I need to just lay in bed and just hope for the best. The next day I woke up, no pain, no nuts. So that was amazing. And, uh, <clears throat> I really take it as it was a sign from God. Because uh, while my back was messed up, it forced me to slowly look over my brake on the car. Like I was couldn't do nothing, but I could, you know, check things out and look at them. And um, I started bleeding my brakes with this automatic brake bleeder. There's air getting in the line somewhere. I knew the brakes were spongy, so I figured there was air in there. But um, when I get hell bent on doing something, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, make, I'll do whatever it takes just to make that one pass or whatever. You know, if I got RTV something, I'll RTV it. I don't care. And then I'll take care of it later. So I think what happened was, I'm a religious person, I'm Christian. I think what happened was, in my opinion, God was like, yo, you need to chill. Like, I know you're going to take this thing out to Mexico and make a hit. When them brakes hit floor, you go off into the yonder. Yeah, you might be strapped in, but that, that log that comes splitting through your windshield, you know? So I just look at it as it was a it was a way to say, hey, chill out, pay attention to the brakes. You need to look at brakes. I always look at stuff like that like a sign, try to be positive about it. You know, so we picked this up for $800. That is literally no joke. It's got a few quirks with it, but it's definitely going to do for what we need. So tires need to be placed for local trips. We'll be just fine for right now. You know, there was some rust and yeah, that looks like a lot some modifications, but the guy actually did a really good job at rust-oleum rust coating the entire thing and it's got a new deck on it really can't go wrong for the price i paid for this so we got a little bit of work ahead of us you can see down there there ain't no plate no more which, no big deal it's right there clean it up weld it back on or some something like that and then the ramps ramps are the first thing we need to address so this ramp is about gone i don't know where he had these things stored but must have been in a bucket of chlorine you know because they are almost gone and i'm thinking this one's bent I'm gonna try and cut it, bend it back, and just weld like basically bracing just just temporarily until I can. Whew. I was thinking about uh, skinning over these to repair them, but uh, after removing the surface rust, yeah, I don't think that's gonna be an option. Um, so went ahead and called a metal supplier couple towns over and uh, got a good deal on some new angle iron and they're gonna do all the cuts and everything for a good price so I'm gonna head up uh, a little bit later pick that up and then go to our boy Corey Pease and weld it up there we'll make up them right
first thing we're going to do when Mr. Corey P gets here is there's a Jeep here. He's going to get it up on the lift and I'm going to remove the drive shaft and transmission. That way we can um, access the, the rear main seal. It's leaking and then we're going to replace all the gas crap. In. Yeah. And that'll help him out big time. He's sick. So it's been hard for him to work. Got really sick. And um, he's like swamped and his guy just like quit on. Him. So, so just another way you can make deals. People get in this community trade work and it helps them out. Trust me. It really does, especially if you're somebody that knows how to do something. Yep, that's something I'm never gonna have. All that. This is a 2000 horsepower nitrous car. And it is sick. Choo! Beautiful car, too. All right, guys, we are getting so close to being able to get some action and finally see some really cool content, but it's just not quite there yet. I need to go over the brakes one more time. There's something wrong. There's air getting in the line somehow, and I just can't track it down. No matter how many times I bleed it, there's just air coming out. It could be the bleeder itself and could be fine all in my head, but I'd really not rather chance that. So either I'm gonna swap to all braided lines with 3 AN fittings, or I'm just gonna have to give it a little test and see if it's just that the fitting wasn't fully snug on there. I mean, I, no matter what, how you play with it, it just feels like something's wrong. But then again, the fitting doesn't thread in, so there's no telling. So it's getting close, guys. It's gonna be there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next.